Okay, right. so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, so my name's Megan. I'll be leading the orientation today. I'm going to go ahead and do this presentation on a demonstration site, but if you want to follow along with your own website, feel free to pull yours up, and you can just play along with me as I'm going along. So I'm going to go ahead and start by getting logged in. If you're not familiar with getting logged in, you're going to use this key at the bottom left-hand side of your site. Your username is always going to be administrator, all lowercase. And your password will be whatever you've set it to. If this is your first time logging in, you'll want to use that temporary password that we sent you, and then it will ask you to reset that. OK, so now we're logged in. We can see the editing functions up here at the top. So I'm going to start by just explaining each different part of the site, and then we'll go through how to edit each of those sections. So to start off, we have our header, which is this top section up here. And then we have our menu, which is each page on the website, categorized right here. Then over here on the right-hand side, we have the sidebar, which is called the common content. And depending on what template you're on, this can either be on the right-hand side of your site or the left-hand side of your site. And then at the very bottom here, we have what's called the footer. And that's just this little bottom section here. So because the header, the common content, and the footer appear on every single page of your website, you actually go to Admin Home, which is this button here, to edit those sections. So I'm going to click on that, and that's going to open a new window for me. So Admin Home, uh, this is going to be the administrative area. This is kind of the back end of the site where you can make a lot of changes. Um, and to start us off, I'm going to go to this Administration tab. So this tab here is where you're going to find that header content, which was at the top of the site, that footer content, which was at the bottom, and then the common content, which was that sidebar. So to start us off, I'm going to jump into the header content. So in your header, you're going to want to make sure that you include the name of your clinic, obviously, also the location, your address, and then your phone number. And a neat little trick here is you'll notice this is a link. This actually means that your clients can click that phone number when they're on a mobile device, and it will automatically call the clinic. And to do this, you can just highlight your phone number. And if you right-click, the first option here is Insert Edit Link. You'll click on that. And then you can just copy what I've done here, which is putting in TEL and then a colon, and then your phone number here. And then once you hit OK, you'll notice that it's now a link. Something else that you'll want to include in your header, if you have one, is a logo. Um, that definitely personalizes the website. And if you don't have a logo, we actually offer um, that for you. So we have some designers here that can help you make a logo. So if you have any ideas or a color scheme that you have in mind, uh, feel free to send us an email or give us a call, and we can help out with that. And then jumping over here, again, we have the footer content. That's going to be the area at the very bottom of your site. This can all be personalized. Uh, we start you off with just a policies link and a privacy link. And you can change these out. If you want to add different links, you're welcome to. You can also add images down here. Um, if you're part of any veterinary organization, this is a great place to highlight that as well. So this is just another place where you can grab your client's attention. Um, but it's not front and center. It's going to be down at the bottom. And then last but not least, we have the common content area. That's going to be that sidebar. And we start you off with an hours table. You can come into here and just change these with your uh, keyboard. And then we also include some social media icons. If you don't use any of these platforms, just go ahead and delete these. Um, if you do use them, you'll want to make sure that you link them to your correct pages. And I'll get into how to do that in just a moment. Then we have a get directions link. This is going to lead to a map on your website where clients can view where you're located. And that also includes a form where they can contact you. Again, this can be completely personalized. If you want to add your phone number to this area, it's a good place to put your phone number again. Um, if you have anything that you want to highlight as far as holiday hours, this is a great place to do that. Basically, any message that you really want to stand out to your clients. Going back out to Admin Home, there are some other things you can do here. You can edit your account information. You can add some content here. You can add users to your website. And then one of the main things you can do here is you can add email accounts. This is going to depend on how your domain name is set up with us. But if you do have email capabilities, you can set up to 20 email accounts. And if you have any questions on whether or not you can set those up with us, please feel free to contact us. 
And then last but definitely not least, we have the template changer here. So this is going to allow you to change the entire look of your website. So if you're not happy with the template you're currently on, this is where you're going to go to change that. So right now, it's telling me that I'm on the scrapbook theme. And to change that, I'm just going to click this link here. So this brings up the page with all of our available templates. It's showing me the one that I'm on here, Scrapbook Style 5, if I decide that I want to come back to it. And then all of these templates that we have are mobile responsive, so they'll automatically resize for a mobile device or a tablet. If you hover over them, you're going to get a larger view of what they look like. You can kind of scan through these, see which one you like. Don't get too hung up on the images or the colors. You're basically just looking at the bones of the site. Everything else is completely personalizable. Um, if you want the menu at the top, we have a lot with the menu at the top. If you want the menu on the side, we have that option as well. You can do it on the left or the right. And I'm going to go ahead and switch this over to one. I'm going to do this cotton wood. And then from here, you're going to select an image. And that's after you hit continue here. So I selected my template. And then I'm going to choose a photo to go with this. If you don't want a photo, you can opt to do no image. You can also send us your own images if you want to put your own into the template. So if you have images of your clients or patients that you see there that you want to integrate with your template, we can definitely do that. And with some of our templates, you can actually rotate images through. So if you have a few different images that you want to try putting in, uh, just get in touch with us and we can try to help you with that. So I'm going to go ahead and select this picture here. And then after you've selected your image, you're going to select a color scheme, which is here. I'm going to go ahead and pick this blue. If you don't like any of these colors or you want to match colors to your logo or the color that you have your lobby painted or anything like that, just let us know and we can definitely add in some uh, custom color codes for you. OK, so now you'll see that I am now on Cottonwood Style 4. And it's giving me a little graphic here of what that will look like. And then I'm just going to click Back to your website. And that's going to take me back out so I can see the changes implemented. So now I can see I'm on this new template. Still have my header up here, my common content, and my footer. It just looks a little bit different now. Oops, sorry about that. OK, so now that we're back on the home page, I'm going to go ahead and start diving into how you edit each particular page on your site. So for the home page here, it, this is just considered a basic web page. We just have text and images and some links and graphics here. To edit this page, I'm going to go to Edit Content, which is this button here. And that's going to open up a new window for me. This is the editor here. It's a lot like Microsoft Word. Um, so if I wanted to change any of this text, I can just highlight this. I can increase the font size. I can add text color. I can change the font family. I'm going to go ahead and make some changes here so you can see what that looks like. I'll change this to blue to match the theme. OK, so I've changed that now. Now to add photos, you have a few different options. You can just put your cursor where you want to add one. Or if you want to switch one out, you could just click on the one that you want to switch. I'm going to go ahead and add a new one down here. So I have my cursor here, so it's going to add the photo right to this spot. And if you right click with your mouse, you're going to get some options here. The second one you see is Insert Edit Image. I'm just going to click on that. Now a new window appears asking where we want the photo to come from. That's this source field. If you click on this button here, which is a little folder with a magnifying glass, that's going to open up the file manager. This is something that you're definitely going to use a lot. This houses all of the eVet site stock images. Um, they're all categorized by species. So if you wanted to add a photo of a dog, you can just click here. You can also personalize your site by adding your own photos. And to do that, you're just going to use this upload button. So I'm going to hit Upload, and let's say I want to add a photo of my own dog. I'm going to do Add Files. Here's a photo of her. I'm going to grab that. You're going to see right now it's just sitting at 0%. It's not going to start uploading the picture until you actually hit this button here. Once I hit that, I see it go to 100%. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And now you'll see that the photo I just uploaded is selected, and it will automatically be selected whenever you upload one. And then I'm just going to hit Insert here. This is telling me the dimensions of the photo. I'm just going to hit OK. And now it's put the photo of my dog directly where I had my cursor. And if you decide, oh, I didn't actually want to put that in there, just highlight the photo. And you can hit Delete on your keyboard, and that will wipe that out. 
some other options that you have with photos, you can double click on it. And this takes you back into the photo. And this will give you the dimensions. So if you wanted to make this picture a little bit bigger, you can just change that number. And then if you click outside of this first area, so I've changed the first number to 400. And I'm just going to click outside of this. And you'll see that it automatically resized the other portion. So now it's already going to be 400 by 400. I didn't have to change that number. And then over in this Advanced tab, you have some other options with the photo. You can add a border if you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and choose, I'll just do black for the border. And then you can add a width for your border. This is going to read as pixels. So I'm going to do between 1 and 10 is a good size. I'm going to do 5. If you want a really large border on your image, you can go higher than that. And then another option you have here is to align your photo. This is really important if you want to wrap your text around the image. So I'm going to put the photo on the left, and that's going to mean that the text is going to wrap around on the right. If I wanted the photo on the right, I could do that, and then the text would be wrapping on the left. You could also center an image, too, if you want it in the center of the page. But I'm going to put it back to the left. And you'll notice here that this changes every time that I make an edit here. And that's just putting in the code for what needs to happen with that photo. You don't need to worry about changing this at all. Our editor will automatically do that for you. So you can see here, I have it floating to the left. My text will wrap on the right. I have a 5 pixel border with black. And I've changed the size to 400. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now we see those changes here. So I've doubled the size of the image. I've added a border. And I now have the text wrapping on the right with the photo on the left. Another important thing to note here is adding links. So you can add a link to either an image. So I could link this to a page wherever I wanted it to go. You can also link icons, like this one here. And you can also link text. So if I wanted to link this advanced equipment and technologies wording and have that go to, say, my services page, I can do that right within here. I'm just going to highlight those words that I want to link. I'm going to right click. And you'll see this is where we did the image. We're actually going to do this top one, which is Insert Edit Link. I'm going to click on that. And now a new window appears asking where I want to link it to. So here you're going to put in either the URL, or if you're linking to a page within your site, you actually don't even need to put in the URL. All you'll do here is you'll use this link list. This is going to give you a preview of every page on your site. And you can just link directly to one of these. So I'm going to do the Services page. So now you'll see here, when clicked, this is going to lead to this page. And then this text to display here is going to be what they click to get there. And then you can also add a title. This is going to be text that appears when you hover over that wording. So if I wanted to say something here like our services, when they hover over these words, it will show them that it's going to take them to our services. One last thing to note with linking is you have this target option. If you do none, that's telling you that the, when clicked, this link is just going to open right within the same page. If you do new window, which is the other option here, it's going to open up in a new tab for your client so that they don't have to actually leave your site. It just opens in a new tab. This is what you'll want to use if you're ever linking to an outside page. But if you're linking to something like we are now, which is within your website, you'll just want to do none. I'm going to hit OK here. And now we see that these words are linked. If we hover over it, we get that R services that we typed in. And then if we save this and go back out, this is now a link. And if I click on this, it will take us to R services right within that same tab. And I see that we got a question about adding photos and having the text not so close up on the border. That's a great question. So I'm going to go back into edit content here. So we've aligned our photo on the left, and we have our text wrapping on the right. You can absolutely leave it like this, but you'll notice the text is right up along that picture. And we can change that so that you have a little bit of a buffer here. To do that, you're going to double click on the image, go back to this Advanced tab. You'll see we have it aligned on the left. But now we're going to give it a margin. And because it's on the left and the text is on the right, we're going to add a margin on the right-hand side. I'm going to do 5 here. If we had our picture on the right, we would want to do a left-hand margin. I'm going to hit OK. And now you'll see that you have a little bit of a buffer here. We can make that even larger if we want. And you can play around with these numbers. I'm going to do 10. And now we have an even larger buffer here. So I'm going to save this. You can see what it looks like. 
So now that text isn't right up along the image. Okay, so now I'm going to jump over to the staff page. The staff page is a lot like the home page. Um, you just have the basic text and images. But you'll notice here that everything is aligned basically perfectly. You have the same amount of space here as you do here. You have an amount of space here. This is because this is set up in a table. Tables are really useful when you have a lot of information and you want to get it in, put in in a uniform way. So I'm going to jump up to edit content again. And the way that I know this is in a table, just from looking at this page, is I see these dotted lines all the way around this text and image. And there's also one going down the middle here. Also, if you click this, you'll notice these little squares appear. That's also telling me that this is set up in a table. This particular table is made up of two columns. You have your column for the images. There's two here. And then you have a column for the bios, which is here. And then in this particular table, there are three rows. So you have one row for this doctor. Then you have a row kind of as a spacer or a buffer. And then you have your next row with your next staff member. Again, you can switch out this photo. You would just right click it, insert edit image. And then you can just edit this text here and add in your own bio. If you added additional staff members and you wanted to add more to this table, you can definitely do that. All you'll have to do is click into the last row. And then you have two options. You can go up to this table tab. And here you'll see we have our table properties. You can delete the table. You can add some borders to it. I'll get to that in just a second. You can add new rows. And you can add new columns. You can also delete them. So in this case, I'm going to add a row after. Now I have that next buffer row. And then I'm going to add another row after this. And then now I'm going to have my row for the next photo, which I put here, and then the bio, which would go on this side. You can also get to those same table editing tools right within the cell. So if you're in here, you can right click. And then you can get back to those same options. You can paste a new row. You can also paste a new column. So if I wanted to do another column after this, I now have a column here. And I could do like school information. If you wanted to have all of their degrees off on the right-hand side, you can do that. And then if I decided I don't want that, I would just come over here to column and delete that. If you were starting from a page that didn't already have a table built in for you, you can add your own table. To do that, you come back up here to the Table tab, you do Insert Table, and then you select the amount of cells that you want. So this is kind of giving me a graphic representation of what it would look like when I added it in. So this is going to be the number of cells that you're adding. So we have one column, two column. Right now it would be one row, two rows, and so forth. All right, so those are tables. Again, I said that you can add borders. If you go back up here to the Table Properties, so right now, if you go to the Advanced tab, there's no border color set or background color. You can add these in. So if you have a custom color you want to put in, you can put the color code here. Otherwise, you can just select from one of these and hit OK. And if I hit OK here, we now have a little border going all the way around our table. You can also edit just individual cells. So if you wanted to just give this one cell a color, you can definitely do that. I would just right click inside of this cell. Go to Cell Properties, go to the Advanced tab, and then you can add colors here. So if I really wanted to highlight this one, I could do a color there, black. And now just this one cell has color behind it. So if you ever had anything that you really wanted to stand out to your clients, you could do a color behind the cell. I'm just going to go ahead and close this. All right, now jumping over to the services page. This is a page that we offer with all of our new websites. If you are new to eVet sites, you'll definitely want to go through this page and make sure that we aren't offering anything here that you actually don't offer at your clinic. And you'll also want to make sure that you are listing anything that's unique to your clinic that you do offer. So make sure you really personalize this page and read over this text. I'm going to go into edit content here. Um, so if you wanted to add any of your own pictures to this page, you can absolutely do that. You can edit all of this text. You can also link all of the words that you want to link to. So right now we have this set as a link to our surgical services page. If you wanted to create a page for each one of the services that you offer, that's definitely an option. 
and then you could just link each individual one. So again, you would just highlight the text, right click, do this first option of insert edit link, and then you could go to your link list and find the page where you have that. Some other pages under services that we offer are a screenings page. You'll want to go over this and make sure that you want to include that. A surgical FAQs page. Again, just read through this. Make sure that we aren't listing any information that's not applicable to your clinic. And then we have an additional frequently asked questions page. Um, just make sure that your hours are correct here. And again, that we're not listing anything that you don't offer. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the pet library. So you'll want to make sure if you do have this as a live page on your site that you have it activated. You only have to activate the library once. Right now, this one is currently not active. And I know that because it says no articles selected for this website. So there's no option here for me to search for anything. To activate it, you actually use this Edit Special button. And all you have to do is select the species that you want them to allow to search. So if you only see dogs and cats at your clinic, you're just going to select dogs and cats. Then you'll hit Save. And then I'm going to close this. And now our library is activated. If you ever want to add small mammals to that or horses, just jump out there and select another species and then hit save again. And you can change that at any time. So now you'll see we have the library activated. So this is what your clients will see when they come to this page. So coming up here, they can select if they want to search just dogs, cats, or leave it as all. And then they can type in whatever topic they want to search. So let's say their pet has fleas and they want to learn more about that. They're just going to type that keyword in, hit search. And what's really neat about this page is it's completely embedded within here. So your clients don't need to leave this page to view any of these articles. They would just click on one, and they can read it right here directly within your site. They can also print it, or they can email it. Um, something else that you can do is if you're ever in an appointment with a client and you're talking to them about a topic, you can always search it on your site. And then you could say, I'm going to go ahead and email this to you. And you can add some comments here. And then you could put in their email address and email it to them. This is also a great way to direct traffic to your website. So if you have a conversation with a client about a topic, you can tell them, you know, go to my website and visit the pet library, and you can learn more about this. So that's the pet library. Again, you only have to activate it once. We also offer these informational pages. The first one here is the Pet Food Recalls page. This is the Drug and Food Recall Center. This information automatically comes from VIN. You don't need to worry about updating this page. It will automatically update itself. This is just some updated information on recalls. They can browse by year. We have some news topics here. Um, and if you decide that you don't want any of these pages to be live, I am going to go over how to hide pages or how to delete them completely. We also offer some how-to videos some things that we think would be useful for your client. Again, you can delete any of these that you don't want to show. If you have your own YouTube channel, this is a great opportunity to put in your own videos here. We have a list of poisonous plants. And you'll see this is set up on a table. I'm going to jump into edit content so you can see what this table looks like. So in this case, we have a four column table and then a ton of rows here. If you wanted to add a new row with some additional plants, you would just come into here. Again, just go to row, and then you would do a row after. You can also delete any cells that you don't want to include in here, um, or if you don't want to have this page available at all. Again, I'll show you how to delete it or hide it. And then last but not least, we have our links page. These are just some links that we think would be useful for your clients. This is completely customizable. You can delete any links that you don't want showing here, and you can also add any of your own. You can also add images to this page if you'd like. OK, I'm going to jump over to Forms. Uh, forms are probably one of the most powerful tools that we offer on our website. This is going to be the ability for your clients to fill out an online form, submit it all online, and just email it to you. So once they submit it, it would get emailed to your inbox. And then from there, you can respond to the client. These, you don't have to have all of them available to your clients or any of them if you don't choose to. We also have a Files page where if you'd prefer that a client actually fill out a piece of paper and bring it in with them, they can print it from home, just a little bit more convenient for them, fill it out, saves everybody some time. So you can upload your own 
forms directly to here. If you have a boarding form or a surgery authorization form, you can put those directly into this page. And to do that, you would just go to Edit Special. These are some stock ones that we automatically provide with the site. If you don't want to use any of these, you can just delete them. And then you would add your own file by clicking here. Some of the online forms that we offer are a new client form, a prescription refill, change of address, or request appointment. So I'm going to jump over to this new client form. So again, this can completely be personalized. You can change the name of it. You can change this text here. You can add an image here if you'd like. And you can control every question that is asked here. So you'll want to go through this, make sure that we're not asking anything that you don't want to ask of your clients, and make sure that you add in any questions for information that you do need from them. So on this particular page, we can actually do edit content or edit special. So if I jump into edit content, I'm going to see that I just have the information at the top of the page available to me. So if you want to edit any of this text, you'll do it through edit content. And then if you switch to edit special, you'll see the entire form is available here to edit. So you can change the form name here. This is going to be the email address where the form is being sent to. If you want it to be sent to multiple email addresses, you can do that as well. You would just add a comma, add the next address, and so on and so forth. This is going to be the response that your clients see after they've successfully submitted a form. And you can completely edit this. You can add images or links to this. Um, and just come into here and change this text to whatever you want it to read for them. This show captcha, that's just going to be a captcha code at the end. It uh, helps to control spam submissions. And then here is where you can add a new field, or you can edit the ones that we've already put in for you. So we have some standard fields here, name, address, phone number. You can move these up or down by using these arrows here. And you can completely remove a question by just clicking this red X. You also have the ability to mark a question as required or not. So if you don't want them to have to answer something in order to submit the form, you would just uncheck this. If you want to add your own question, you're just going to choose a field here. You can either use one of our set ones or just add in a text area or block with your own question. And then you have the option of where you want to put this in. If you ever have a client tell you that they submitted a form but you didn't receive it, you can always check your results through the website, and you can do that right here. So it says View Results here. You would just click on that. And there are no submissions on this particular site, but if you did have successful submissions come through, they're going to be listed here. So you'll have the date that they were submitted and then the information that was provided. OK, so those are our online forms. You'll definitely want to go through those and make sure that you customize them. We also have a More Features section. So we have a calendar. If you have any special events that are coming up, this is a great place to feature those. We have an employment page. If you have any opportunities coming up for employment, this is a great place to put those. And you can also create customizable forms. So you can start from scratch and create your own form. So if you wanted to do something like an employment form, you could build that from scratch and then link it on this page so people could apply directly online. A photo album page, if you want to add your own photos, you can do that here. We do offer some that start with the site, so you'll want to delete these if you don't want these on here. So this is a great place to add pictures of your own patients. We have an adoptions page available. If you have any pets that are up for adoption that you want to feature here, great place to do that. We have a coupon page, which right now is hidden. But if you do ever offer any coupons for your clients, they can come under this page and just print them directly through the site. And then we have a site search and a site map. We also have our Contact Us page. This page automatically comes with this Google map that's going to pull from the information you provide over here. Again, this page is going to have an Edit Content section, which will be this area up here, and an Edit Special section, which is going to be controlling this area. This page also includes a form that they can contact you on. Again, if you don't want forms to be something that's available to your client, you'll want to inactivate this. And I'll show you how to do that. But basically, your client can come into here. They can leave a comment or a question. And then they can submit it, and it would be emailed to you. So for this particular page, we'd go to Edit Content. We can change any of this that we want to change. You can link to any forms or add any special information about um, how to find your clinic. So if you're 
you know, behind a safe way. This might be a great place to highlight that. Or if your parking lot is on the left-hand side of the clinic and it's hard to find, this would be a good place to put that as well. And then if we switch to Edit Special, this is where that Google map is pulling from. So let's say your clinic moved and you needed to change this address. You'll just update it on here, and then the map will automatically change with it. This is where that form is pulling from. So if you wanted to inactivate the form completely, you can just delete this email address, or you can change this if you want to change where it's going to. So if I were to delete this email address and hit Save, you're going to notice here my map updated with my new address, and now my form is completely gone. So they can no longer submit that form on this page. Another page that you'll want to take a look at on your own site is the Emergencies page. We start you off just listing your own clinic information, but if you don't offer any emergency services and you like to refer to a different clinic, you'll definitely want to add their information here. So in this case, again, we have Edit Content. That's going to be the information at the top that you can customize. And then if we switch to Edit Special, this is going to be where you can put in the emergency clinic information. So you would just put in wherever you like to refer to, put in their address, their phone number, it's automatically going to pull these map links from whatever you put into here. And then we'll hit Save. And it's now going to be the ER clinic's information. We also have a client feedback page under Contact Us. This is a place where your clients can go to leave some suggestions or comments or concerns. And they submit it online, gets emailed to you. This never gets posted to your website. This is something just between you and the client. And you can decide if you want to get back in touch with them. I wanted to jump back over here to this hours page. This is another part of the site that you'll definitely want to update. So going to this hours page, we have both edit content and edit special available here. So if I just wanted to tweak these hours, I'm going to go to edit special. And you can just select from this drop down here for your applicable hours. So if they ever changed or anything, just jump into here and edit them right within these fields. If you're closed any particular day, just check these boxes and then just hit save when you're done. You can also do edit content on this page. So if you have any holiday hours that you want to highlight, this is a great place to do that. So you could say will be closed for the holidays. And then you can really jump that out to them by changing the font size, changing the color. And then if we save this, that's right at the top here. If you're closed for any particular time for meetings or lunch breaks, this is another great place to highlight that. OK, so I'm going to jump back over to Admin Home now that we've discussed how to do links. And I'm just going to show you how you would link your social media icons and also how you can change these to some different buttons. So going back to this Admin Home button, I'm going to go to this Administration tab. And again, that's going to be our common content. So we have our social media buttons here. If I wanted to add my own Facebook link, I'm just going to click that and do Insert Edit Link. From here, I can either copy and paste my Facebook URL directly into here, or you can just type it out. So this will be the Facebook page for your clinic. The title here, again, that's going to be the text that will appear when they hover over that button. So you could do visit our Facebook. Link list, you're going to do none because you've already put the link here and it's going to an outside page. And then again, for this target field, you want to have it go into a new window so that it opens in a new tab and it leaves your page still open in the other tab. I'm going to hit OK here. So now if we hover over this, we get our like our page on Facebook. And then this is now a link. So if we were to go back out to the site and click on this, it would take you directly to the Facebook page in a new tab. If you want to change these buttons, we do have some different icons available. So if you right click and do Insert Edit Image, this is going to replace the image that we have there with whatever we pick. So right here, we're going to go back into this source. This is going to open our file manager. So if you go into the image bank, we have the EVET sites image bank. And we have this icons folder here. I'm going to click on that. So these are just some different icons that we have available to you. Um, we have different organizations that you can put on there, emergency buttons. And then scrolling down, we have these hours clocks. And then here's where you're going to find 
those buttons for it, Facebook and Google+. So we have some different options here. We have some little paw prints. So for this Twitter one, I'm going to scroll down. You can see we have a lot of options here. You can also link to forms. And Twitter is going to be all the way down here. So if I wanted to change that to a paw print, I would just click on that. This is telling me the dimensions of that. I'm just going to leave it as that for now. Hit OK. And now we have this Twitter paw print rather than just a little square. And you can change all three of these if you'd like. If I want to make this a little bit smaller, again, you're just going to double click. I'll change this first number. Click out of here. It'll automatically resize that other half. I'm going to hit OK. And now it's the little paw print and it's smaller. OK, so I'm going to update that. Go back out to the website. All right. So here we have the pet library link. Again, you can link this to your library. We have some different options available there. You'll definitely want to link to it somewhere on your site, though. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk about was editing the menu. So if you want to add any pages, delete any pages, or move pages around within your menu, you're going to do that right here with this Edit Menu button. So now I'm in the Editing Menu feature. You see all of your pages over here. You can expand these out to see the pages that are underneath them. If I want to add a new page, if you want to add it to the very top menu, you're going to add a top level menu item. That's going to put it directly in that top tab that you see. If you want to add a page underneath one that's already created, so let's say you wanted to add your clinic pets as an About Us page, you can add a sub-level menu item. It's going to ask you to confirm you want to add it. You'll hit Yes. And then you just need to fill this information in. So here I'll do Clinic Pets, add the title. And then here it's going to automatically create the page plug for you. This will be the URL. So if you wanted to direct clients directly to your Clinic Pets page, this would be the URL that you give them. This description, this helps um, with how Google recognizes the page and how it gets indexed. So you'll definitely want to put a little description there. And then your page type. You have a bunch of different options for page types here. They're all pretty self-explanatory. If you have a blog that you want to integrate, it would be a blog page, a calendar page if you want to add a calendar onto your site, etc. And if you ever forget what any of these pages are, we do have a list of descriptions here. So for the clinic pets, I'm just going to do a basic web page. And then here we have the option to hide the page. So this is really useful if you're working on a page and you're not quite ready to take it live and you want to keep working on it before clients can see it. If you hide the page, that's going to mean that you can only see it when you're logged in as an administrator. I'm going to save this. And now you'll see that the hidden page is in parentheses. That means that my clients can't see it. It's only for me to see. And as soon as I unhide it, those parentheses will go away and it's now live. One of the great options that we have available for a page type is our Vintegrated Content page. This is going to include articles from Vin that can rotate through your site. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like. So I'm just changing my home page from a basic web page to a Vintegrated Content page. I'm going to save that. So you'll see here now we have some articles down at the bottom of our page. This is a great way to, if you're missing any information here or it feels bare, it's a great way to kind of fill out your web page. So if you click on Read More, you're going to be able to read the entire article. Again, they don't have to leave your site. It's all going to be right here. And then they can just go back to go back to your home page. Every time your client refreshes this screen, it's going to load four new articles. If you come up here to Edit Special, this is where you control the articles that are shown and how many are shown. So if you only want to do two, or you want to do up to six, you have those options. You can also select any articles that you don't want on there. So if I didn't want birds, I can just click on that. And if you want to view the articles that are showing, if you click on this, this is going to be a list of every single article that could possibly rotate through. So if there are any of these that you don't really like or you don't agree with, you can just uncheck it, and it won't be available on the site. So you'll see now it's excluded. Going back to that, you can also add your own articles. So if you were to click on this and click Add New Article, you can type out your own article here with your own information, and then that will also be included in those rotating articles on the front page. 
This doesn't have to be on the home page either. You can do this on any page. So if you wanted to do a page just with news, you could do that as well and have them rotating through that page. So I think that covers everything. We did edit menu. That's going to be editing this section here. Again, if you want to edit the header, common content, or the footer, you're going to do that through admin home, going to the administration tab. For editing any basic web page, you'll use edit content. And then on some pages, you're going to do both edit content and edit special if it's one of our template pages. Um, make sure you activate your pet library, again, through edit special. And you'll also want to make sure that you update things like your hours and the emergencies page. Um, it, I also wanted to note that we do offer makeovers that are complimentary. So if you're not currently happy with your website or you really want to revamp it, just let us know and we can create what's called a copy site, which is a duplicate site. And we can work on a makeover behind the scenes before we take it live. So that's a great option if you're looking for a change, but you're not quite ready to commit to something yet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause and let you guys ask questions. So if you have any questions or you want me to go over anything again, please feel free to ask. Um, you can also raise your hand if you want to be unmuted and ask a question out loud. I did have a question, Megan, if you can go back to the uh, hours in the common content. Yes. For creating two sets of hours. For example, Thursday 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. and then 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. if there's a meeting time. So if there's a weekly meeting, how you can note that. Okay, so you could either do like they have here an asterisk, and you could say down here, we're closed from this time to this time. Or you could do something like this where you say open from 8 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. And then closed from 1 to 2. And then you could do another column, too, where you say, you know, permanently closed at 5. So you have the option here to tweak this table. Again, you can add new columns or rows. Or you can just do the asterisk and do special notes down here. So hopefully that answers your question. If you have any more questions about the hours table, please feel free to ask them. If you, again, if you have a question, please type it in, or you can raise your hand and we can unmute you and um, definitely can talk to us and ask. Or if there's a section that you would like us to review, please let us know and we'd be happy to do that. We have about uh, 15 more minutes. Alice has a question. Alice, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead, Alice. How do we sign up for a complimentary uh, website makeover? Uh, you can just you can ask just us right us now, email. or, or let yeah, us know right now. Yeah, you can ask us now. Um, you can also give us a call or send us an email. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Looks like there's a couple questions in the question screener. Is there pricing for the do-over website help? Nope. This is all complimentary and included um, with the, the websites you have right now. There's no additional charge to do the copy site and work with you on a makeover. And then it looks like there's a question about how to insert a logo. Great question. So I'm going to go back into the header area. And you don't have to add your header or your logo to the header. You could also add it to the common content if you wanted. Um, a great place to do it, though, is the header. So on this particular page, so I'm on the header edit content. And you can either just add it next to this wording here, or you can add a new column. I'm going to go ahead and add a new column. So now I have this third column here in the middle. And you would just right click and do insert edit image. Again, you'll go to this source field. And then you're just going to look for your logo. If you haven't uploaded it yet, go ahead and click upload, add files, and then look for your logo here. I don't actually have one on my computer, but I'll use this picture of my dog as an example. So I'm going to upload this, close it. And then again, the one I just uploaded is going to be selected. So I'll hit insert. And OK. So this is really large right now. I'm going to go ahead and resize it. But if this were your clinic logo, now it's going to be centered between the name of your clinic and the address here. 
and you can put this wherever you'd like. If you prefer to have this column over here, you can do that. You could also just upload the image right here and align it to the left and have the text on the right. Um, we have a question about how to make a section of the site go hidden or live. So I'm going to go back to Edit Menu. So going back to Edit Menu, you'll just select the page that you don't want to be available right now. So let's say it's that Clinic Pets page. I'm just going to click on that. You'll want to make sure that over here is the page that you're wanting to hide. And then down at the very bottom here, you have the option to hide the page. So I'm going to hit yes and save, and now that page is within parentheses, meaning that it's hidden. So you can hide any page that you want. You'll want to be careful if you hide your home page, it will actually ask your clients to log in when they're trying to go to your site. So make sure you don't hide your home page, or if you're wanting to work on a separate home page, you can do that, and then just take it live in place of this one. Um, Mary asked if you can drag the photos to resize. Great question, and yes, you can. So if I go back out to here, I'm going to use this photo as an example. So if you click on this photo, you can take this. Oh, I think it's not going to let me because of the border. Let me go to a different page. So if I click on this photo, I see these little squares appear. And you can just click on this. You'll see it's now highlighted and drag it down, and it's going to tell you what size it's going to. So if you have a particular size in mind, just keep watching those numbers. You can make it bigger as well. So that's definitely an option too, or you can just double click on it and change it here. Either way will work. So if I save this, now you'll see it's a little bit smaller. Um, somebody asked about the site being mobile optimized. So all of our templates that we have available now are on mobile responsive templates. So when you're viewing it on your phone or a tablet, it should shrink down to size appropriately and everything um, will go back down. If you're having any trouble with that or something looks weird on your site, please let us know and we can take a look into it. Um, you can either call us or email us for that. Um, one other thing to note is we do have this help link here. So if you're ever working on the website and you run into some trouble, you can click on that and search for topics here. It also has our phone number here. Feel free to call us. We're here to help. Or you can send us an email, too. Okay, we have a question, can you run two templates at once and have one hidden? Um, you wouldn't be able to do that on one site. It would have to be set up on one template. But that would be a great opportunity to do a separate makeover site. So we could do a second site, set it up on a different template, and let you try it out. And you can play around with swapping them out. Um, but you wouldn't be able to run two templates at once on one page. And I'm not sure if that was your specific question. If I didn't answer that as you wanted, go ahead and uh, let me know. There's a question from Mary on how do we rewatch it. So after the webinar, we will process this video and we will pro um, put it onto evetsite.com. And under support orientation sessions, you'll see the video there where you can rewatch it. And we do still offer one-on-one -on -one orientation, so if you decide that you really want to go over something in depth or you have any questions about anything I went over, uh, feel free to call us and we can set up a time to talk with you personally, too. Okay, we have a few more minutes. Anyone have any more questions?
Alice, it looks like you have your hand, I don't know if I took your hand down or not, but I'm going to go ahead and mute you if you have another question. I, I had a similar question, how could we review this again? And I understand we go to evetsites.com and you'll have it uploaded, correct? Yes, correct. Um, Megan, if you want to go ahead and bring up the evetsite.com website, we do have the video that was given on the first time up there, and then we will add this video up there as well. It's under support and orientation. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we just have a few more minutes for questions. Please feel free to email or give us a call if you have, uh, if you think of other questions or you're re-watching the video and something comes to mind, don't hesitate to give us a call. Again, we can do team viewer sessions with you to actually look at your website with you, share the screen uh, so that we can edit things uh, with you if you um, have questions along the way. All right, for those of you who want to stick around, um, if you think of more questions, please feel free to do so. If not, this concludes the webinar for this week. We are giving these every Wednesday, so feel free to stop in again, uh, same time, same place next week. And thank you again for using eVet Sites and for participating in today's webinar.